Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the No Closer Show. I am Scott Carson, excited to be here today. Even more excited and jacked up to have our good buddy, George Anton, join us from uh, California on an afternoon. And I, we, when I reached out to George to say, hey, you want to be on? He's like, heck yeah, what are we going to talk about? And we're like, I don't know. We're just going to have on two guys on time. What's going on, George? Hey, how are you, man? Thanks for uh, having me. And uh, you know what? I look forward to having these uh, fun chats with you and we talk about anything and everything so uh thanks for having me hey man always an honor we should probably talk a little bit more often because we usually run walk away with some good ideas for each other don't we <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> so how are you doing What's i'm doing good you? man i can't complain life is uh good we are uh busting our butt uh selling a lot of assets off uh looking at buying some new assets and then uh just closing out with some stuff the podcast is rocking trying not to travel as much um, and, and just trying to have a life, man. You know what I mean? So I, I have a serious question for you. Yep. Have you seen the Avengers movie? Uh, the yes. Avengers. We went and saw it Sunday night. Have you? Yeah. What do you think of it? I thought what it was I'm pretty th- good. I thought it was really long. Now, yeah. we, we kind of had a double header. Sunday night, we wrapped up our mastermind at like 4 o'clock. Yeah. I filmed like five mini podcast episodes with my students. We come home. Steph and I are sitting on the couch eating our lunch. We both basically pass out because we're just exhausted after our mastermind events you know how those go and then of course game of thrones comes on at eight o'clock and steph's a big fan of game of thrones we even did our whole t-shirt this time around game of notes (laughs) (laughs) and so we watched that and that's an emotional hour and 20 minutes steph's like on the edge of her seat and i'm like it's pretty good and we have tickets at 9 40 to our alamo draft house here in town so we hightail it from here we only live like five minutes away Get to that, we get seated in, and we're like, wow, walking out, is, it's just like stunned silence a little bit at the end, you know? Yeah. You know, it's, I'll tell you what's funny. I mean, maybe this is TMI, but it's the first movie where I don't actually go to the, to, to the restroom. Yeah, I mean, they've gotten long, two plus yeah. hours. This time we didn't, I, she's like worried, because I usually order like two large glasses of tea, so I'm the bottom yeah. of it. The guy or the gal that's waiting on us sometimes will order a picture. She's like, you're going to have to go to the bathroom, man. You're going to miss it. I'm like, no, I'm not. I have no <laughs> bladder. I have a strong bladder. The bladder is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an awesome movie. I, I really enjoyed it. It is. You know, you, there's a lot of similarities. You know me and uh, loving it to find analogies with movies and, and entrepreneurship and things like that. And you really, you know, I find a lot of great you know, how the characters have evolved over time. You think about Steve Rogers and the line of the movie, oh, yeah, this is America's ass, is the line yeah. of the movie, I think, right? <laughs> but you know what? I, I'm so glad you said that about the, the – um, I, I always – my wife laughs at me because every movie I watch, I, no matter how bad it is, I always get something out of it that impacts me, that, like a message and stuff. And, uh, and I'm always looking for – these things that really to, to inspire me and motivate me, but that sounds like you're like that too. Yeah. You know, you and I are both talking about, we both, you got Iron Man over your yeah. left shoulder there sitting there. I've got him over my left shoulder here too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. I think no matter how old you get, I think we all are still have that inner child in, inside of us. Yeah. And you know, you and I are about the same age and we grow up. It was a different time when we grew up, than what kids are going through these days. You know, we could yep. only imagine what a movie would look like. You know, yep. uh, I was talking with my trainer. And he's like, oh, there's no way they're going to do a Wolverine movie. How are they going to get something come out of a guy's hand? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, you know, they're gonna make, how are they going to be able to make people float? You know, how's, how's Iron Man going to have something shoot off his arm? You know? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that, that's the so, thing you look at is we all evolve. We try to find some way to evolve on a daily basis. But I think that's the thing one of the best things about movies that I like more than anything else is just kind of the escape a little bit. Yep. You know, the escape it right. Taking two hours, three hours yeah. in this case. Yeah. To just go kind of unwind a little bit away from the distractions. One of my yeah. favorite times to go to the movies is in the afternoon too, George. I don't know about yeah. you. Yeah, me too. Exactly. There's no one there. It's just me, myself and I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely the thing. So, we, we'll leave a, li- a few of the spoilers out here for everybody, but that's the thing is it's, if you think about how awesome Marvel has done with the release of what, 26, yeah. 20 some odd movies, and they've got a whole nother round yep. of things, it, 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 you know, and how they told it, I really compare that to business. You take a little bit here, 
a little bit here, a little bit here, and it all kind of adds together, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating, um, and it's it's hard to miss uh, one of them. You you you're you're stuck with the whole series, and it's it's fascinating, and it just builds you know builds a bigger story. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this: What is your favorite um, superhero, and why? How can you relate it to to whatever? What what is it about that superhero that that inspires you? So I am a big fan of two of the major principles. Big fan of Iron Man. Tony cool. Stark. And yeah. why is that? And I am also a big fan of Captain America. Now, wow, that's awesome. I like them both, and sometimes they're at odds for each other, but I like Iron Man first. I just like how kind of rock starish Tony Stark is. He's, he's brilliant, yeah. always coming up with something that works. Uh, he really doesn't have any super power, you know, superpowers himself besides his gadgets. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's probably also why I'm a big fan of Batman, too, because they're just normal people that are using yeah. their brains and wealth for something good. So, yeah. plus, he's a bit of a playboy, which is kind of cool, you know, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, but I like Captain America. Captain actually probably my favorite one just because it's the all-American, um, always trying to be on the right side, yep. you know, always yep. – you know, willing to step up, you know, I can do this all day, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's a, it's a funny line when he's fighting himself in the movie. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but those are my two, my two favorite characters. I just, I've yeah. always enjoyed them. I mean, you know, Wolverine's great too. Steph's a big fan of Wolverine. Um, mm -hmm. Some people have called, said, thought Hulk, cause I'm a big guy <laughs> and green's my favorite color. I said, wow. I'm not necessarily the Hulk. I would be the bulk. <laughs> 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 but but i just like that, that you you know both um you have that inner good and evil kind of thing aspect of it yeah. i wouldn't say tony's evil yeah. he's just trying to think ahead and things and, and you have yeah. that kind of inner conflict yeah. of trying to be good with steve rogers and everything yeah yeah i i really like uh, iron man a lot i think uh part of the thing that i love about the character is like uh, you're saying he's always using his brain to to challenge the status quo and come up with stuff, right? When he was in Iron Man, the first one, stuck in a cave, you know, um, he had to use whatever he could find to create the suit to, to get out of there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that to me, I find challenging because most people in, in life are always, they, 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 they can't figure out that, they, they don't realize that you can develop solutions with what you have and especially these days with the internet and stuff, you can just Google anything. And, um, and yet they're complaining about anything and, and they're stuck in the cave. And here you have this, this whole, you know, storyline around Iron Man, fascinating story. So yeah, that's, that's what I like about it. Yeah, it's definitely the thing. I, I totally agree. People take so much time just to sit there and bitch and moan about things that yep. if they were in that same place, they would have just had the iron shreds go into yep. their heart and call it, yep. a, call it a night, yep. Yep. you know? Uh, and that's the thing there's i don't care what your situation is and the fact that we still live in i think in the greatest country in the world yep. of, of being able to help i mean if you look at it we still have thousands and millions of people that want to come to the united states because it is have it is the land of opportunity yep you know and with the internet you can i mean if you look at like the can academy or lynda.com there's things out there really you, you don't have to bribe your way into college anymore to learn stuff like a lot of yep. people True, really, truly. Um, so let me ask you this, Scott. What are you working on these days that you're so fascinated by, or you're looking, or you're excited about that, um, like a secret project? I'm. I want to turn this whole interview. I want to ask you the, the question. So, so oh, I, I see. It's a role reversal. <laughs> okay. So tell me um, something you're working on that's like super excited that you want to share with the world, but you're not ready, and give us like a, a sneak peek of. Something exciting. So what's funny is, is this kind of goes back to like a year ago. I want to think last, maybe last September, October. I don't remember. We were in Vegas, and for most people that didn't know me growing up, I wanted to be like the next Dan Patrick or Keith Olbermann on Sports Center. Then I not, then I not. Okay, because the SC stands for Scott Carson, right? Not Sports Center stands for <laughs> Scott Carson. And you know, going to school, I ended up going a different route to business and got into. Uh, business. I enjoy business. I enjoy entrepreneurship, but I've always liked, you know, I was a radio DJ one semester, my early year and did theater arts in college and stuff like that. 
And I like, and I'm a big believer that everybody runs a media company, whether they believe it or not. You know, you run a media company, I run a media company. It, it, it's come to that way now. It's not the same old, same old way of doing business of sending out postcards or door knocking or, or doing a lot of that stuff. You have to think differently. And so two things, one we're working on, I'm, I'm really excited about kind of on the note side of business is doing our online uh, commercial note camp that we're doing. It's just going to focus on commercial wow. assets commercial debt. Cause I don't think a lot of people are spending any time and there's everybody and their dog is te trying to teach about residential stuff. Now, nobody's teaching on the commercial side of the ball game. And that's where I cut my teeth initially back over a decade ago. And so we've got that coming up the end of July. We're really excited about that. We got some great speakers. I just had Dave Foster on from 1031 exchange on earlier this morning. He's going to speak on there as well. And that's exciting business wise, but I, I'm, I have to tell you, man, I get really excited about stupid geeky marketing stuff. You know? Wow. You know, like last night I had a coaching call with our, our students about geo-targeting and using, um, using like Instagram to market to an event. Like that's why I asked, when are your next events, George? So I can market to those <laughs> people from any location. That's what kind of, it's like I can be a fly on the wall, but not have to be there. So that's one thing that we're doing. You know me, I'm always trying to constantly cut down days in the road if I can. And uh, we, I've been toying around with it for a little bit and really liking that fact that we can, I could literally be on a plane flying somewhere and setting up a marketing campaign for 30 bucks for 10 bucks a day for a three day event at any numerous locations across the globe. That's incredible. You know, and, and doing that or driving in you know, audiences to our podcast or things like that. So I'm, I'm, to, I'm kind of the mad scientist when it's coming like, a, how can we leverage this to obviously drive more engagement, not only for us, but something that I can bring, to my good friends, yeah. you know, like we did last December here in Austin. You know what I mean? Yep. You know, I have to tell you, so, so let's go back to the word when you said everyone is a media company. Yeah. So you're talking about really like uh, being a marketing company and leveraging social media and leveraging different um, medias to, or mediums to really, okay. That's yeah, that's what I mean by medium cup. I mean, because we're all in business, of course. Right? I don't care if you're, yeah. Uh, teaching finance hacks or selling yeah. credit repair yeah. or selling a house. It's all about getting in front of your right. ideal client, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, so really that's what really gets you going is the whole marketing. You know, oh, I, yeah. I, I, I'm the same thing with, with finance. Yeah. I geek out over challenging everything out there in terms of finance and trying to find uh, ways to hack it. But, to me, I, I've been, I'm, I'm working on some fascinating things that I'll be launching at the end of the year. <clears throat> um, but I've been able to find some amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. The problem is it requires a lot, a lot of calculations. Mm -hmm. Generates of return and all this stuff. But what happens, I'm building it into a software um, that does um, pretty advanced stuff and but keeps it simple for the user to use. Um, but I can tell you, it's um, uh, it's fascinating stuff. So it's funny. You're into the marketing side. How can I get the name out, the word out there? And for me, it's like I don't care. I just want to sit in front of my computer, focus on. <laughs> well, it's the same thing. I want to sit in front of my computer too. But I want to yeah, do oh, it yeah. having a green wall behind me. I want <laughs> that beach. I want that the sea green <laughs> ocean coming in. That's yeah. that's the thing. Because I know you're big on goals you know, and helping people when you have an end in mind, that's the biggest thing I think I really want to focus on the next few years is getting to the point where we are spending more time somewhere tropical. We're spending some more time, you know, where we want to be. Don't be wrong. We have a good time. We yeah. travel a couple of times a year, have fun. And we've been very blessed to speak some players. I mean, you're excited. You're going to Branson, Missouri here and speaking in <laughs> Branson before too long. That's awesome. Man. <laughs> Yeah, and actually, I'm, I am excited with Brass. It's just that the weather's going to suck. So It'll be fine. Just go. Just make sure you take two pairs of shoes because it's going to be muddy wherever you go walking around. There. Really? Yeah. I've never been there. So yeah, it's, it's it's beautiful. The Ozarks, great. But if it is raining out of the way, make sure you probably take a good pair. Uh, your good pair of shoes, you probably don't want to get wet um, just because it is it's raining there. That's my memory as a kid is just going through Branson in the neck of the woods and we forgot to bring a rain check, so I'm walking around in a hefty cinch sack. <laughs> <laughs> hefty, hefty, hefty. <laughs> but, 
you know, where's, you know, that's, you talked about the software you're working on and you, mm -hmm. uh, last time we talked, so I'm really excited to hear about it. Cause that's the thing. It's making little subtle tweaks to see that kind of that dial move at the very end. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this, this is gonna, I'm touting my horn here, revolutionize investing in a whole different way. And I know it sounds crazy and bold, but wait till you see it. Um, I've showed it to one or two people, um, <clears throat> the first um, test version, and these people are pretty advanced and they were blown away. And so um, I'm cleaning it up right now. We're creating a, a newer version, but I I'm dying to show it to you first, make sure I get your approval, and then uh, and launch it to the world. But I, I can promise you this, it will change the way investing, especially real estate, uh, investing is done well you better yeah you better better let me know yeah. we'll, be glad to, we'll be glad to put our media marketing behind it for sure to help you, go. <laughs> you know what i mean make some subtle yeah. changes there so that's so what, yeah, so what's new with you what's uh what's what have you been up to these days not much man i i don't i'm a note geek at heart so we're here buying selling assets we're uh just that's basically about it working through our deals selling stuff off, buying stuff. We're moving to a new office space. We're pretty excited about that. Um, you know, we're, we've got lucky, got a great staff. One of our girls is going to start working from home three to four days out of the week, wow. which is nice. She does a tremendous job. Um, we are toying with the idea of adding another asset manager to help our students with their asset management on their assets. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, that's one thing that we've been t toying with for a little while, helping people out with that. Cause we, I'm, I'm very blessed. We've got a great asset manager who works remotely for us and she just does a tremendous job and she looks for ways to save us money too, which is a beautiful thing for having somebody who's on your staff. She's like, Oh, can we stop using them? Cause I can do that here and do it cheaper now. I'm like, duh. Can we do that yesterday? It's amazing. You know, that is amazing. And it doesn't always happen because finding good people is hard to find. That's the, the biggest thing when it comes down to it. Right, George. Yep. Absolutely. You know, um, we just wrapped up our, our 22nd note mastermind this past weekend and wow. we had uh, 40 people attend. We had a few people that had to cancel the last minute, but the thing that really gets me excited more than anything else, it just gets me fired up outside of my own stuff is when I, I'm talking with our students or talking with people who are having great success in what they're doing. Yep. You know, you, I have a big heart as well too. And I know you feel the same way when you're talking to your clients, your students, yep your mastermind members when they're coming and they're, it's like a, a light bulb goes off. It's like a big ding, you know, in their head, <laughs> you know, I got to pull out the noise. Maker. I have to tell you one of the things that I, I find also that's fascinating is how much we learn by having people ask right questions. Yeah. And, but also learning from uh, different um, things that might happen to our students that normally wouldn't have happened to us. Yeah. Um, I, um, I have to share the story with you. There was a gentleman many, many years ago um, that asked me a question. And, um, and so I paused for a second and I realized how much wisdom was in this question. I answered it though, and he got what he wanted, but I went back to my room and I couldn't stop thinking about the, the, the wisdom in his question and what, he didn't, he, what he never realized is how much I learned from his question. I, I researched, I did a lot of things. I ended up writing a book on it. It was that, um, uh, it was that impactful to me. And now there are a lot of, there are thousands of students learning certain things from me all because of this one question. And I've had a few people, you know, in all these years that asked me some pretty amazing questions. And to me, you know, we, we love seeing the success stories, but also we, we, we grow with them, you know, and that's something we, we love doing. Oh, that's, that's such a true thing. I, half the, somebody asked me the other day, they're like, man, how do you know all these sites or these marketing things? I'm like, well, it's because the fact I've had a lot of students yeah. that went out and did something and shared it with me and I just yep. make a, made a note of it. I mean, that's, yep. yeah, we, we, the good, I think the really good people that provide a lot of value are learning just as much from their students as they are teaching them, right? Yep. Exactly. That's exactly correct. Yeah. Um, so that's or what's awesome. been the biggest, what's been the biggest lesson you've learned from one of your students, George, thinking about it. Deep thought by Scott Carson. Wow. Say that again. So what's the biggest, what's the biggest lesson you've learned from one of your students? 
Well, uh, let me let me answer a different, slightly different question, and I'll come back to this. One thing I learned is, in general, is how many people hold themselves back. Mm. You know, the mindset. And I've never been, I never, in, in the beginning, I never believed that mindset was important. Now I think it's everything. And I, I realize how much people hold themselves back. It's almost like you're going nuts, telling them just do this one, two, three. And they're so stuck on, before even starting step one. And they're creating all this stuff. And so I've become such a big advocate of, um, you know, personal development and, and mindset and all that stuff because of that. And uh, every now and then when I try skipping that step, if you will, um, it always comes back to haunt me. And I see why it's, it holds people back. So that has been honestly the biggest surprise because I've always been the type of person that just keeps moving forward. And, uh, <clears throat> and we all have our stories. We all have our doubts and fears, but it doesn't hold me back. But I see how much it holds, I would say, you know, 80, 90% of the people out there. Um, so that to me has been the biggest aha. Now, if there was a one biggest lesson I learned from someone, um, God, that's a hard one. How about you? How about you? <laughs> oh, man. I would say one of the earliest lessons I got in life, I think, well, not in life, but in, in especially what I'm doing now, is just doing more, you yeah. know, doing more, you know. So, and so I, mean, I think sometimes we have students that challenge us because they're like, well, what about this? And you're like, ah, you know, sure. you know, like, wait a second. If I take my self doubts out of the deal and do more and, and buy bigger, make more offers or yeah. work that extra 5%, <clears throat> you know, that so many people don't put into things that extra 5% of making phone calls or that 5% to sp spend a little five more minutes at the office when everybody's rushing out. Or just that little extra five percent goes a long way in the long run of things. You know what I mean, I think I've always learned more from my failures and missteps than I have from my successes. Yeah. But I think yeah. when I'm talking to people that are at come to my class, that I'm like, wow, why why are you doing here? What are you doing in my class? You know, yeah. and and that whole of learning to gain knowledge, learning for you know self improvement is yeah. should never cease to stop going because that's the only way that we really stay ahead of the curve yeah with what we're doing it helps us stay driven if we get in the same thing i'm doing over and over and over the you know it gets dull and we start to slip yeah i i find myself um if i'm not always challenging myself and learning something new i really get bored and i i i stop getting excited about showing up and um so it's really important to me to always be learning, challenging myself. Um, and I'm always getting into things, new investments, um, just because I love the, the, the learning part. It's really, you know, it's not even about the money anymore for me. It's really about, you know, learning, challenging, growing, but the result of doing well should be the money. It shouldn't be the primary goal. And um, I'm constantly getting into one or two I try to focus on one or two big deals a year and that's it. I don't try to do a lot of deals anymore. It's like one or two big deals that have to generate an incredible return. Um, and so, um, uh, so that's, that's what keeps me excited about things. And uh, I, I do everything I can not to add more stuff to my plate. Um, so yeah, in fact, I'm working on a, on a project right now on a venture that um um, I'm trying to get my kids involved in, and um, uh, it should generate somewhere between thirty thousand a month or so, forty thousand a month. Um, and I'm doing, I'm going to do eight of those over the next few years, and, um, and I'm trying to get people in, involved in. in uh, it's fascinating stuff. So this, but it has to be something impactful. So um, uh, something that will help the community, something that will help whatever. So. This is this is what drives me right now, and and, and I freaking love it. <laughs> this is what you're sharing in December. Was it the steampunk stuff or no? No. Yeah, no uh, uh. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. You want to get yeah. it back out when it's done. That's awesome. Yeah. But that's the thing. Anytime you can have a community involvement, yeah. or do something to help your community, I think that it gets exciting for things. I mean, yeah. We, you know, that's the thing we've done. We do a lot with the military. You know, donating a lot of classes, donating a lot of people, and and helping. Yeah. 
any way we can for stuff. But Steph's a big, Steph's a big, big contributor to the pet rescue community. Mm. And I, I'm a huge advocate of that for, I mean, I joke around with her a lot of time. Like, well, can I just punch a few holes in a FedEx box and throw a cat in there and ship it overnight? <laughs> no. <laughs> She's going to stab me when I get home later because of that. But anyway, but she, yeah, you know, she's got such a big heart. She's had, you know, she's gone like she had her big rescue just like a month, month and a half ago, where she drove to Dallas and picked up seven cats, wow, seven cats in these containers, and drove them back south here to uh, this feline uh, or cat, um, oh, what is it, uh, cancer thing? Uh, what do you have it with? Not, uh, I can't think what the name. What is wrong with them? But anyway. It turns out Austin has this like Austin Pets Alliance or Pop Pets Alive or whatever it has has this one special department for feline leukemia cats. Oh my god! Yes, that's crazy. It's crazy, and she you know, picked up seven of them, came back. They've all been adopted out here, wow, and executed in a kill shelter. Um, you know, she's just, it's and that's a that's her niche, and she loves it. I mean, we've got three cats, and it looks like we've got a fourth one that's staying with us permanently now that she uh -huh. was trying to transport where the person walked away. But that's you know, that's great. We don't have kids. Um, you know, we, we have the you, kind. this to me is, I mean, the, the, the lesson there um, for everyone really listening to this is there's so much fulfillment in making an impact or something that makes a difference in your community. And, you know, we talk about money on, on some of these things and, uh, I mean, money is important and all that, but really what gives you fulfillment ultimately is it's not really the money. You have to combine that with impact. You find to have something that gives you so much fulfillment. We have a lot of students um, that do, I, I, mean, I really push them to, to go out and do certain things, um, uh, whether it's for, you know, veterans or, or whatever it is, um, uh, you know, there's, or, or helping, you know, younger you know kids and stuff getting into entrepreneurship whatever it is but there's so much fulfillment in that and i really think if people started with that before investing it would actually make that so much the journey so much more interesting yeah i think that's it's when you can have a passion or something that drives you being emotionally connected yeah. to an event like our, we've got a buddy scott dilly who's a note investor who runs a orphanage in haiti he completely finances this wow. orphanage 20 plus 30 plus kids, you know, um, that's his big driving why, you know, he's a, yeah. he's kind of a, a quiet guy originally from Australia or yeah, um, Australia. There's, there's a book I'm looking for, uh, that I would highly recommend for everyone. It's called the power of significance. Mm. The power. Of, it's one of those small books. Um, what's the author's name? Um, you just mentioned him earlier. Was it, uh, um, the Power of Significance, a small book. It's white and blue. You can look it up on uh, on Amazon. Um, excellent book. It's tiny and um, so one. Um, it's a one flight read. Yeah, exactly. And uh, excellent book. It is so inspiring, and I highly recommend it to to a lot uh, to to everyone. So you you'll read a lot about that. And then there's another book also called from. Um, 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 the second half, or what is it called? Um, I forget the name of the book. Um, it's it's about coming after half half time. Half time is it called? Half time or something? Anyway, I forgot the name of it. Excellent book too on, on significance. So, so what else you want to talk about, Scott Carson? <laughs> you have uh, for those that don't know, George is George is the. Uh, the, the chief nerd behind finance.com. He's also the, uh, the past author or author of the bankers, the best-selling book, the banker's code. Uh, he's also the debt million author of the debt millionaire. Did you there. read that book by the way? If I would read the debt millionaire by yeah. the way. Yeah, man, I got, that's got a couple copies here, man. You actually read it. Yeah, I read it. I thought it was great. <laughs> I love this so much. I, I, you know, I sent like a hundred copies of this out to our members actually. Wow. Well. That's awesome. Yeah. What's Great that? book. Everybody what's loved it? it too. You should have seen it being plastered across social media. Oh, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> you know, the extra hundred people that actually have read the book. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got copies back there. I see it behind you, behind your right shoulder up there by your award. Oh, the top yeah. of your class award is, you know, that's the thing is I think 
leaders are always reading too. I see a lot of the books and I've yeah. got a pretty good bookshelf here behind me uh, down yeah. the floor. Steph and I've got a lot of books at the house, but that's the thing is, you know, we all, and I, you know, we joke, everybody watches a little bit of TV. We're watching, we talk about movies here, but I, I'm a big fan of diving. You know, I got a book in this week from somebody that we've uh, yeah, got through in a couple hours, you know, uh, another book in from another investor that she sent me the book and i said oh buy homes not shoes i'll read it okay that's weird yeah so i love i love getting books in the mail somebody's got a book in you know we'll take a quick quick read on to it i'm a speed reader and, and dive into it and try to spend a you know 30 to an hour a day reading on some stuff if i can i'm not like quite like warren buffett what he spends like five hours a day reading wow. these days amazing yeah you know, i would love to have his bottom line if that's what it takes i, I would read <laughs> 12 hours a day if I have that bottom line. <laughs> yeah, you know, someone sent me an article recently about him, how he started, and he had raised um, something like a little over 100000 from friends and family many years ago, which is equivalent to a million dollars today. But it really shows the importance of knowing how to raise capital and how to structure the deal so it's low risk so he doesn't lose the capital. Because I find uh, most people you know, can do one or the other. They can raise money, but they screw it up, lose the money or vice versa. They don't know how to raise the money, but they know how to invest it safely or whatever. But having the combination of both is so critical. And I think for people listening to this, um, I think the big thing that I would say for everyone starting out is take the time to learn how to structure things correctly, but also how to raise capital. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, what would you say, Scott, would be like the biggest lessons for you that you would share with someone starting out? And uh, <clears throat> learn, what you're, you're, learn what you're talking about. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Learn exactly what you're talking about. And don't shy away from the elephant in the room questions. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the more you can know about what can go wrong. Yeah. Let's face it, something goes wrong all the time. Yeah. You know, never been a deal that's been 100% straight to the point. They've only had very few of those. There's yeah. always something that drags on a little bit longer. Or the, yeah. the value doesn't come quite back at what you expected or the borrower drags out the foreclosure process. So you have to have plan A, B, and C. Yeah. And that's, that's the biggest thing with that. You know, be prepared to answer those questions and, and don't be afraid to say, I don't know. Yeah. You know, you know I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things I have my students do <clears throat> is prepare what, what's called a risk management table. A risk management table is um, three columns, might be four, but uh, one column are all the risks that can happen in, in an investment. And then, so I have them brainstorm and just write down all the different risks first. And then the two other columns are risk mitigation. How do you lower or mitigate the risk? How do you lower the risk or eliminate the risk? And the last column is contingency plan, which is what do you do if that, if that risk happens, right? Um, sometimes we add a fourth column, which is how likely is that to happen, this risk, you know, one, you know, low, medium, or high, or whatever. But having them do this exercise really helps them so much, and they do it one time per asset. So if it's a real estate, it's a rental property, they only have to do it one time, and they keep using that for any time they're raising money. But what it does do is it helps them answer any questions, any hard questions that can come up. Like, what do you do if the market goes down? Well, they have to have an answer ready. What happens if this happens? What happens if, if uh, whatever? And so by having this very comprehensive list that's done one time, it helps them raise so much more capital, number one. But number two, it helps them also build confidence uh, in themselves, because now they know what, what they're going to do. Uh, part of the uncertainty and part of the fear I find with most people, most investors, is not knowing what to do in case something happens. Mm -hmm. um, and so that whole process might take, let's just say, a you know, few days or even a week, um, but it has an impact for, uh, for a lifetime. Um, and so um, I think it's so important to have people go through that exercise. It's such a powerful one. It's such a, that's such a great, great, great point out there. Know what to do, go through it, work through it, know what your options are. Yeah. You know, don't sit here and let fear keep you from asking questions. That's one of the things I try to reiterate. Hey, if you have questions or something's going on, 
get somebody involved early, not yeah. later on, right? Yeah, that's exactly correct. You know, if that's you don't know the fact. answer, say, I don't know, but yeah. I will find out. I'm going to call this person, this person. And that's one of the things I think is such a great thing about what you do and, and, and similar with what we do is the network of students really yep. works well together, right? Yep, yep. And I'll tell you, just to add to what you're saying, uh, Scott, one of the things I have my students do, and I think everyone should really think about this, is answer this question because everyone is going to be either thinking it or um, or going to ask you. This sounds risky or this sounds like it has high risk. You should be able to answer very uh, you know well scripted answer how to ha have that. And I'll tell you that that's the first thing I teach my students is how do you answer that question. Um, and by having all the right documentation and metrics, these are we're not talking about just fluff. We're talking about very specific metrics and saying, here's how we handle that. And here's our five-tier approach to doing that. Um, when you start with that question or that answer, and you know it inside out, and it's all documented for your um, investors, uh, it will make, it will build so much confidence, so much confidence in you and in your investors. Now, one of the things I do in class is I turn to students and I say, um, whatever they're investing in, I say, what happens if the market goes down? And they always start with this, uh, almost like this, and then they, they say whatever it is. Well, that hesitation just created um, uh, lack of okay. trust yeah. because the investor is going to, or the per money person is going to be thinking, this person is making this stuff up as, as he's sitting there. But if he says, uh, it's on page 19, um, and let me walk you through our portfolio, our, our, our strategy to handling that, and it's all documented, it makes, it builds so much confidence. So I literally have my students document that, but also try, to, I, I have them go practice raising money by simply talking about the downside. They're even not talking about the upside. They say, here's what we're going to do. Let me show you how we're covering the downside. And the fact that they can cover the downside gives them so much um, uh, uh, you know, leap forward in terms of raising money. So I, I find that fascinating that most people focus so much on the upside. And I tell people, start by focusing on the downside, have the answer, have everything documented. And it's not that much. It's literally like a few pages and build so much confidence in people. Uh, what would you think of that? Oh, I love it. I love it. I think you have to do that. What's the worst thing that can happen? Everybody focuses on the best, best possible thing that can exactly. happen. Nobody focuses on the downside. Oh, that's not going to happen. Well, no, yeah. it does happen. You know, yeah. Yeah. that's, that's brilliant. And it's like we said, Hey, focus on the elephant in the room. What's the, what yeah. could go wrong? Cause you know, Murphy, he's a bit of an asshole, but Murphy. Very true. I think that's uh, I think that's really uh, a, a big step. I know a lot of investors freak out about, oh, you're being negative, George. Why are you thinking about the downside? Well, that's what the other person is thinking. That's why. <laughs> yeah. So, and if you can address that, okay. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, and, I th and we, I think we all have to realize that somewhere it's, it's going to happen somewhere in between. Like you're never having one of the worst possible situation. You're never going to have the yeah. best possible situation. Correct. It, it, you know, you're never going to have the highest comp. Yeah. You know, you're not going to have the fastest foreclosure. You yeah. know, um, yeah. you, you've got to really focus on the difference. And I, and I crack up about that because I see a lot of that going on in the market. A lot of people are diving in and, and buying stuff at, at a premium, the market being high, thinking, oh, this is going to work perfectly, especially on the multifamily side. We're going to buy a lot of multifamily and get it re or yeah. value adds in three years. We're going to get bank financing and get cashed out. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no guarantee yeah. that's going to happen in three years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I look back at history and what we saw a decade ago, and a lot of people thought that beforehand until the market crashed. And then the banks wanted to bring in an additional 20, 25% of the table to refinance them out because their equity had it gone away. So, yeah. you know, and I think this is the thing, I think a lot of people are sitting around cash in the market, trying to figure out what they want, where they want to go, what they want to focus on. Um, you know, I think it's, in an up down or, or an up market or a down market, there's money to be made. You just have to do some research. Like one of the things I loved that I learned from you when you came into uh, Austin in December was you building, basically creating your own credit default swaps, basically by buying a shorting yeah. stock on the building. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. loved that. Yeah. 
let me expand on that for the listeners. What uh, what I was talking about is <clears throat> is um, taking part of the income coming in from whatever the asset is. Let's just say in, in, in the example I was giving is real estate. If you buy real estate um, and you raise say 20% down and uh, the idea was that you take some of the cash flow and you buy put options on stocks that highly correlate, and I stress the word highly correlate with the real estate market, such as developers and, and not banks, but uh, you know, real estate builders, developers. Uh, KB Homes and things like this. And what you do is you buy a put option on their stock. And th these are what's called leaps, long-term um, put options. And so what happens is if the market tanks, you might lose money on the, the down payment, but you offset that with a huge gain on the put option. So, um, so yes, every six months or so when you're buying these things, you're losing the premium but you're, you're, you know your real estate is, is stable. Uh, and so what we do is we have an actual spreadsheet that helps us calculate and it ends up being um, uh, pretty cheap to buy these things because it has to drop a lot. And so, um, uh, yeah, but that's, uh, that's uh, and it comes out of some of the income, not, you know, so um, it's a great way to, to protect our principal, our down payment. Yeah. yeah. I loved that. I was like, man, yes, that's what we got. We got to do that as well. So we're uh, excited about that. You know? <laughs> excited about that. And that's the thing is you learn. And that's one of the thing I like, I, I like bringing you in and other people in as we get together is you just spend time visiting and you learn nuggets like that across yeah. the board on different things, you know? Yeah. So let me ask you this. So um, what would you say are key pieces for your students to learn or, or to have in place for um, uh, for covering the downside, do you have any uh, anything you you, you want to share? Well, I think first and foremost, buying right is the right thing. Stick to your guns. There's a lot of people that are overpaying for assets, and I think it's the, the first <clears> thing. <throat> Don't be afraid to walk away from a deal. It doesn't hit the numbers. Yeah. You know, usually, the fact that we're buying stuff at fifty percent of value as is, it gives us yep. that gives us that flexibility in case it does start to drop. Yep. Um, and be prepared, have a couple different exit strategies. I think that's the big thing. If it's going to be performing, great. If it can be sold, great. Sometimes yep. the velocity, whatever can be the fastest velocity of capital, yep. this saves you from a lot of risk and stuff like that. Yep. I think the second thing is to make well, sure. You already covered two things there. So your third thing. So you covered oh. the yeah, buy, buy, buy low <clears throat> or buy the right with the numbers. Yeah. Then you said exit strategies. Um, yeah. Go ahead. What's the third? Third thing is don't try to do it all yourself. Yeah. I think that's, you have to rely on, 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 on vendors. You've got to re rely on professionals to go do their job too many times. And I said, speak from voice of experience. When I first got in, I tried to do everything myself yeah. and I wasn't an expert. A jack of all trades yeah. is a master of none. Yeah. And as like Henry Ford did, he's not the guy going out there riveting on the, on the model T, right? Yeah. He had the best people doing his job, the jobs that he wanted to, and he kind of directed them. And I think that's what everybody has to do. You, you want to hire the best when it comes to asset protection. Yeah. You don't want to skip on the insurance side. Yep. You know, those are two of the most focal points because that's the downside aspect of things. Yeah. You know, you may know all you know about notes or all about fix and flips or all about apartments, but it's the asset protection side that will CYA cover your assets when something goes wrong. And, and yeah, a lot of people had bad things happen to them a decade ago. Everybody went through financial hiccups, foreclosure, short sales, bankruptcy, things like that. You have to realize that most of the, the, the people that have done amazing things in this country have also gone through bad times. Yep. Yep. You know, that's very um, true. Yeah. You know, that, that's the thing is it's not everybody's perfect. Um, yeah. You know, you just you dust yourself off, pick it up and figure out what's, what else is, you know, what, what can I dive yeah. into now? There's, yeah. So, Plenty of ways to do it. I heard the um, um, one of my buddies, Greg Reed, and I've said this probably a couple of times in the podcast, talked about seeking counsel versus asking advice. Hmm. Seek counsel, not advice. And most of us, we ask, if we're going into something new, we ask advice from all of our friends and family members who have no clue on what the heck we're talking about. They have no experience. Wow. And you can use that three times. Just give me credit three times. Then you can use it as yourself there. Cause I know you're writing it down right now, George. I am actually. I know I you are. Awesome. 
seeking counsel. Don't ask for advice. Don't ask for advice. I love that. Because advice is like a-holes. Everybody's got one. and doesn't yep. mean it's right. <laughs> so if, I, if I was going to build a home, I wouldn't talk to my sister who's never built yeah. a home. Yeah. I wouldn't talk to the guy across the street who's a mortgage broker. I would go to yeah. a builder. Yeah. Right? Yep. You know, if I'm going to deal with a – if I – Go. To, I get sick and I have cancer. I'm going to deal with a cancer specialist, not a, yeah. a hair transplant spe- specialist. <laughs> okay. Knock on wood here, but yeah, that's, that. you know, we get so scared and intimidated on new things that we f- don't want to ask. And the most successful people, people are the best at their craft are often the most willing to share with you so that you not make the same mistakes that they can, you know? Yeah. Scott, let me ask you one last question. Okay. I, want, I have to ask you this. What is your biggest fear? Oh my gosh. My biggest fear is snakes. No, I'm just joking. I hate snakes. But anyway, um, my what biggest the, fear. What is the big fear that no one, very few people know about Scott Carson? The thing that keeps me up at night yeah. is, is that I, I'm, not, I'm not given enough. You know? I, 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 enough. I, I, I think it comes from the point where I, got, I was down early on in life, going through divorce, almost facing, and facing foreclosure, things like that. But that doesn't scare me to fail. I'm not scared of failure, okay? That's not what I'm scared of. I, I can fail. I can make money no matter what. Whether it's selling tiddlywinks, <laughs> social media, or pop-up dolls, whatever what it is. I, I prefer the note game, okay? <laughs> but the thing that scares me more than anything else is that I'm just – I'm not doing enough. So you're not doing enough. Not, not doing enough. Not giving enough. And I, that's why I'm always trying to share stuff. I'm always trying – because I keep thinking there's probably somebody out there that I'm, 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 not, I'm I can impact if I just give them the tools. I'm a big believer that those that want help, if you give them the tools, those that really want the help will go out and do it. So and let me ask you this. So, okay, I love that. That's a great answer. But what about, what is your fear? You about being selfish for a second. Be selfish? Be and, selfish and tell me what's your fear. I'm, I'm dying to know. Because I, I've known you for many years. You're an incredible guy, big heart. You've impacted so many people. You are such a... And for anyone that hasn't met you, like in real life, you are an incredible person. Thanks, but I want to know what is Scott Carson's fear about something internal about him? Hmm. Um, so my dad uh, was diabetic at the age when he was he was forty when I was born, so just a little bit younger than me, and he didn't take care of his health. By the time. Uh, I mean, he was diabetic. He had a couple heart attacks and he just kind of, his last two years were really miserable. His heart was only pumping like 17%. So that's one of the big, oh one of the biggest. God. Yeah. And he passed when he was 69, you know? Um, and one of the things that kind of drives me and that's why I've been such a big health kick here and then trying to do things differently, not traveling and working out and changing my <clears> diet <throat> is I want to be around for a long time. Yeah. You know, I don't want to pass when I, you know, I don't want to have a health thing like that, you know, where I have a heart attack, my heart's not pumping. I don't want to die in the middle of the night. I want to live as long as I can. I want to soak up as much as this little round rock will allow for us. And I just want to, that's what I want to do. I don't want to, I don't want to die. I don't want to be sick. And that's some of the biggest driving factors on why I'm working out every day at noon, you know, told the one trying to cut out all the red meat and then I die if I can. I'm not a huge health kick. I mean, I still like my cheeseburgers, double meat, double cheese from Whataburger every once in a while. But that's the thing that scares me. It's like, I don't want to end up, I don't want to go through that. And I'm trying to do everything I can to avoid that. Have you talked about this on, on the show before? Because uh, no. I just noticed you, you just got a little bit emotional there almost. Like, yeah, because yeah, my sister was getting married. My dad was already kind of bad health. I remember driving around as we were doing things and I asked him, you know, he asked me to be the guy that unplugged him if something happened. Oh. Yeah. That if he went on to that, he didn't want to do it, that he put, he put it in my hands to pull the plug. Oh my God. Yeah. And uh, it's one of the things too, my dad said, you know, my wealth, uh, you know, I'm dying a, a very wealthy man because I've got such great kids who are doing great things. And he goes, there are things that I wish I would have done that I didn't get a chance to do. So those are the, th- that's the words that, haunt my head it's not doing things that i don't have the, i have an opportunity to do something to go do it versus sitting back with regret is there something you want to do uh like a, on a bucket list that you haven't done been skydiving that was fun oh uh, shit <laughs> a couple of times 
um i you know we've written a book maybe i do a novel i don't know i i have this weird i, I like to travel more i want to go to more more countries more and more as, as much much as i can I, I enjoy that i want to see the world i always think you appreciate more what you have when you're not seeing the world and then secondly i have this weird idea of like walking across the country i met a couple guys that did that recently where they literally walked wow. across the united states they went old forrest gump on everybody and and how long did that take took them uh took them a couple weeks took them about eight wow. weeks to do they actually walked walked yeah not run i mean they probably jogged a little bit of it yeah. and dogs are chasing them but they walked across the country they got sponsorships they got some stuff set up for like that but literally walked across the country from East coast to the West coast. That's incredible. Yeah. And so that's something you, you would, I think I would do that at some point. Yeah. Wow. So I think it'd be, I always enjoys that part of Forrest Gump when he's running through and seeing the hills yeah. and the sunrise and stuff like that. I think it would be fun. I think you could have, you'd meet a lot of interesting people along the way. And if you put a cause behind it, I think you could really raise a lot of, ca a lot of money and, and do some good for whatever cause it was. But wow. Um, anything that's you, your big bucket list, George. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I have a, you know, like this, but I've been, I've checked off a lot of things. Um, um, a lot of it now has to do with, uh, just, you know, launching things that have an impact on, on the community and, yeah. and fun things. And there's some things I want to, I don't know, just, uh, very nerdy stuff, uh, about discovering stuff or whatever. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm blown away by, by your, uh, your responses there. So thanks for sharing that. No problem, brother. Well, hey, man, I have got to run now. I want to thank, thank say you. thank you for coming thank on. That's two guys killing an hour today. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks we, for having me. I really appreciate you. And uh, I'm looking forward to many years of working together. Same here, brother. Same here, man. Give my best to the family. And we'll see you later. All right, George? Take care, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks again. Hey, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Note Closure Show. Uh, check out finance.com. It's F-Y-N-A-N-C.com. George is just a brilliant, brilliant man at what he does with that stuff and, and a great way to really help you build, to get wealth building and generational wealth and, and stay tuned for some of the big stuff he's got rock and roll. And otherwise, go ahead and make something happen, everybody, and we'll see you all at the top, everybody.